Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian and I'm CTO and co-founder at VC Spark. And in this video, I wanted to talk about the difference in the staking mechanism between Cardano, Cardano and Ethereum. The reason why is because you might have heard recently in the news that the SEC cracked down on Kraken, an exchange's staking mechanism, and Kraken was the uh, third largest known entity uh, that's a validator for the Ethereum network. And so people are obviously concerned about what kind of impact will any regulatory changes happen especially how this affects other networks like Cardano that also has a proof of stake protocol. So let's go to the difference between Cardano and Ethereum. And notably, Ethereum has a protocol called Lido on it that you might notice is the top protocol for uh, validation on Ethereum. And I'll talk about why this exists and how it works exactly. So first of all, delegation. Cardano, yes, supports delegation. So some proof of stake protocols support delegation. Ethereum, no, does not support delegation. For example, other proof of stake protocols like Algorand do not support delegation as well. So if that's the case, how do you become a validator on Ethereum? In Ethereum's case, you require a 32 ETH deposit. 32 ETH, for those who don't know, at current time is about 50K USD. And so not everybody has that kind of money. That's why people uh, use protocols like Lido to be able to um, participate in the Ethereum validation process without having a 50k USD or equivalent 32 ETH to delegate. Cardano for uh, instead has a 500 ADA for running a stake pool. So this is about 250 USD or it's about, it's a little less than 5 ADA if you want to delegate. And that's about maybe 2.5 USD. So much lower cost to participate in Cardano, either as a delegator or as a stake pool operator. So Ethereum's proof of stake protocol is not completed yet. So you cannot withdraw at the moment, but Cardano does support withdrawal. Keep in mind, obviously, Ethereum will support withdrawal eventually. And one thing that's also important about um, Ethereum is that smart contract withdrawal is still not finalized. So X on smart contract withdrawal currently um, is still in the drafting phase. So they will support this eventually, uh, but not quite finalized yet. Uh, but Cardano does support um, smart contract withdrawal. And this is important because, for example, a protocol on Cardano called Milkamita, which is a EVM layer for Cardano that adds EVM support to the Cardano protocol, uses um, the ability to withdraw to smart contract to power the liquid staking a protocol on this EVM uh, layer. So important functionality. You'll notice smart contract withdrawal is also important to Lido. Um, the idea for Lido, for those who don't know, it's a liquid staking protocol. So you um, put your ETH into the Lido contract and you would like to eventually receive your withdrawal. To receive your, your withdrawals in a trustless manner, um, you would need a smart contract for that. Um, but that's not quite possible yet. So Lido um, does not use a smart contract for withdrawal at the moment, so you do need to um, trust their uh, system at the moment um, to uh, really give you the rewards uh, later. So right now, the way they did it, um, originally it was to a threshold signature, and later on they upgraded it so it's no longer um, a trusted threshold signature. Now it's a stub smart contract um, that will be updated later to the real smart contract once the full specification is, is finalized. So next off, slashing. So no, Cardano has no uh, slashing. It instead relies on fairly um, complex um, incentive systems and cryptographic protocols to uh, guarantee uh, its, its proof of, of safety. Um, whereas Ethereum does use slashing. And so the way that Ethereum is, is safe is by some crypto economic incentives that involve uh, punishing uh, bad actors. So this has you know a fairly high effect on, on the risk of participating delegation. So in Cardano, people can just uh, delegate or run their stake pools. And if they mess up, they do not lose rewards. They instead just may earn less. Um, but in Ethereum, not everybody may want to start a stake pool because you're putting up a lot of, uh, and, uh, sorry, they will start a validator because you're putting up a lot of collateral and if you mess up as a hobbyist um, you may lose a lot of money and so if you don't entirely trust your own skills it's better to go with a trusted validator 
like Lido, whereas in Cardano, if you do not trust your skills, but you want to give it a shot anyways, there is less of a penalty for getting it wrong. So that's another reason why Lido is popular. Liquid. So Cardano is liquid staking by default. Uh, Ethereum is no liquid staking by default. What do I mean by this exactly? In Cardano, addresses are uh, two parts. You have your payment key and your staking key. The second part decides who this ADA is being delegated to. First part decides who has the right to spend this ADA. Whereas in Ethereum, it's just a single angle, uh, single address, the single key in a sense. So this is really important because it allows you to, for example, to put, uh, change the payment key to be a smart contract, whereas the staking key still belongs to you. So you can earn uh, staking rewards while using a smart contract. Notably, the second largest DEX on Cardano called Wing Riders uses me this mechanism to continue, allow users to continue earning staking rewards while using their DEX. Ethereum, on the other hand, does not separate the two, it's just one address. And so the way people continue earning staking rewards while using DEXs, for example, would be through a protocol like Lido. That's also one of the reasons Lido is popular on Ethereum, but Cardano does not have an equivalent protocol. Now, both, um, so, Cardano has a treasury and Lido has a treasury, but Ethereum itself does not have a treasury and Vitalik uh, is historically not a fan of treasuries. And so that's the difference between the two protocols. Um, so what is the difference exactly? Cardano's treasury has at the current moment um, about $450 million in ADA tokens and only ADA tokens. Sorry, this is the Cardano. And the Lido treasury has um, 280 million in Lido tokens, about 40 million in ETH and ST ETH. So ST ETH is the name of the um, wrapped ETH inside the Lido smart contract. So it's equivalent uh, to ETH. And then uh, about 18 million in DAI, which is a basket stable coin on Ethereum pegged to the US dollar. So both have, have treasuries, Ethereum itself does not, but uh, Lido does. Now let's look at decentralization. How do these protocols fare in practice? As you can see, Lido is fairly big. It has about 30% of all states on Ethereum, but Lido is not one person. It's a collective of people. And there's about 30 entities inside the Lido contract as validators. And each of them have, um, went to 2% of the total ETH in, in total. So that means that um, there's, it, Lido has about 30% of the Ethereum um, network, and there's about 30 people. So each of them has um, some split of around 1% to 2%, some, something between 1% to 2 The Lido protocol has a DAO that can choose when to add new validators to this set. So they could go from 30 to 40 to 50 in the future. If they decide it goes through a DAO vote uh, to choose who to add the, they actively uh, curate this list to try and maximize client diversity, geographic diversity, and other such metrics. Um, Cardano is more of a free for all. So obviously uh, some people may have their own personal preference um, for delegating to different regions and geographies and so on. Um, but it is not something that the protocol um, enforces because there's no one person, one DAO that um, has this kind of vision. It's just more of a free-for-all. So um, Lido is uh, at the top with about 30%. Uh, Coinbase is number two with about 11. Kraken was number eight, or sorry, number three with 8%. And then Binance was number four with 7%. Cardano, on the other hand, Binance is number one with about 11 this number two is unknown who it is, but it's suspected to be Coinbase with about 10%. Number three is Wave, um, which is actually connected to IOG. These are uh, separate legal entities, but partially correlated. So it's about 4% total. IOG, by the way, is one of the companies that started the Cardano project. And then number four is Adalite at about 2.5%, Adalite being a popular wallet on Cardano. So as you can see, um, Cardano um, goes down uh, quite a bit faster, whereas Ethereum at number four, it's still 7%. And then Cardano has about 30 entities or so, I believe, and that make up a 50% of the network. Ethereum is um, not quite there 
um, much lower at the moment, but the hope is that this will become uh, more decentralized in the future. Part of the reason um, that it's more centralized on the Ethereum side is that about 70%, um, I believe around 7 to 80% of ADA in existence is staked. Uh, and that's thanks to the fact that um, it has liquid staking built in. Whereas Ethereum, I believe it's between 10 and 20% of ETH in existence is staked at the moment. I don't remember the exact figure, but something in that range. Um, so much lower value. And hopefully this will continue to go up once they implement the withdrawal system. Uh, but currently um, it's uh, fairly low. So now that we have um, some idea of the difference between these two protocols, let's talk a bit more about Lido in particular. So Lido being the staking protocol where basically you take your ETH, um, so you take your ETH, you put it inside the Lido contract. And then you get back, so you put ETH in and you get back STETH. And so why do people use Lido as a centralized, you know, kind of risk? Why do they have, you know, about 30% 30, 30 in this uh, one uh, section when they could just have um, all these three different people running independent stake pools, all of which would be one or 2%. And then this would graph and now will look, you know, much better because now you would have, um, instead of graph that was like this, you'd have, a, you know, a bunch of like, uh, one to two percent um, actors, and so this would suddenly uh, look much better. So why have they decided to all kind of pull together and have some uh, shared risk? There's a few different reasons, um, some upsides and downsides to it. So first, let's start with the upsides. So upside number one is it's better liquidity. Liquidity. The reason why is because you get this STE token when you're participating in a Lido. And so to make sure that this STE trades one to one, right? Ideally you have a one to one peg with the value of ETH. Um, the best way to ensure this is to have a very liquid um, token that has high liquidity on, on all the top DEXs. And so by pooling all these, you know, smart, uh, small pools together, small val validators together rather, um, you ensure that it's easier to provide liquidity for this STETH ETH pair. So despite the fact that all these people are pulled together, STETH does not always trade one-to-one -one with ETH. Uh, it has fluctuated in the past. And so this shows the importance of having uh, deep liquidity to make sure these protocols um, are easy to use. Uh, number two is kind of related, um, less risk of depegging. So it could be that um, sometimes, even though it should be one-to-one -one just because of uh, market dynamics, that the uh, token falls uh, way below $1, it's not necessarily related directly to liquidity. Um, so for example, there has been times where STETH um, has dropped from one-to-one -to, -one to, for example, like 0 0.9 to one. And so there was enough liquidity to trade um, however much STETH you want, mo uh, more or less, um, but just the market decided on this peg, taking into account the fact that there is the uh, slashing risk, the fact that there's no withdrawal yet. And so the market kind of decided to give it a 10% um, discount because of these risks. So you can imagine that maybe if it, you weren't pulled together and you all had separate um, tokens, uh, for all the different validators that it might be harder to manage this one-to-one -one peg. Number three is the mitigate slashing. So if you had one uh, token per uh, validator for your liquid staking, then if one of these validators accidentally screws up and gets slashed, all the validator or so all the people who are participating in the liquid staking for that a specific validator have a higher risk of, of exposure. Whereas in the Lido protocol, because it's shared between a bunch of different actors, um, even if one of them gets slashed due to a honest mistake where they misconfigured their node, for example, um, the amount you will get slashed personally uh, by being a Lido uh, member is fairly minimal because you're you know one of 30 of these pools. This is the other benefit you get from all pulling together into one Lido protocol instead of splitting things up. I should mention, by the way, that there's other protocols like Rocket Pool 
is a other um, liquid staking mechanism on Ethereum. So there's different ways to do it other than Lido that have different uh, trade-offs. In this video, we're just talking about Lido specifically. So what about um, downsides? So one of the downsides is that the performance of these pools is not equal. So some pool could um, not perform as well as others. Um, but, you know, kind of uh, take advantage of, of the amortized uh, performance of the other pools. So this is, you know, theoretically uh, kind of a downside. And then uh, because of that, it also means that if you're staking to a validator that you uh, trust will really well, and you know that person uh, will do a good job, you still have to implicitly take on the risk of other validators that you may not like that are part of the uh, Lido protocol. So just because you really trust a, uh, Bob, who's part of the uh, Lido protocol, and so you trust Lido, it does not mean that you will not be punished for Alice, who's another validator that maybe you don't trust that also happens to be a Lido validator. Um, so these are some of the uh, downsides uh, the Lido protocol. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the difference between Cardano and Ethereum and Lido in particular. Um, as I mentioned, there's other protocols um, in Ethereum for liquid staking, uh, but hopefully this gives you an idea of why liquid staking has taken off in, in Ethereum, but, but not Cardano, and some of the design space available to these liquid staking protocols. And so this gives you hopefully the background to go look into other protocols yourself and, and learn more. Hopefully this video was informative and uh, let me know what other topics you'd like to learn about in the future.